This is Damian McNamara, Global Medical News Network. I'm at the American Society for Dermatologic Surgery and the American Society of Cosmetic Dermatology and Aesthetic Surgery meeting in Phoenix, Arizona. And with me is Dr. Joanna Chang, who uh, has this poster behind me on vitiligo. Can you give me sort of the reason why you wanted to do this poster? Sure. So epidermal punch grafting using autologous grafts in patients with vitiligo is an uncommon procedure in the United States, although it's utilized internationally. And so we wanted to look retrospectively at our patients and our experience in order to characterize the clinical phenotype of patients that had success with this procedure in order to improve patient selection. So at UT Southwestern you have a fairly large number of patients with vitiligo? Yes, we do. And basically any major metropolitan area I think you'll find patients with vitiligo. We have an expert, Dr. Amy Pandia, who does not only punch grafting but also blister grafting. Okay, so can you tell me who's the ideal candidate? Uh, I know this is not necessarily first line, right? Right, exactly. So I think the patients that benefit the best from the surgical approach are those that have failed medical treatments, such as topical steroids, immunomodulators, and phototherapy, or recalcitrant areas such as focal or segmental lesions that have been stable and not changing for the past six months. So what has the reaction been like from patients who have this procedure? By and large, I think patients are happy with them, especially if the grafts survive. And they tend to survive better if they're not in the hands or the elbows and knees, areas over the joints that can allow for trauma and for movement and for them to fall off. So they tend to repigment quite well, especially if they have phototherapy afterwards. Okay, so it's kind of a combined but staged approach is what you're saying? Exactly. So we'll usually transplant the patients and then wait one or two months and then resume phototherapy and usually they have a pretty good response. And you also found that age made a difference. Can you explain that to me? Right. Younger patients did a lot better as you can see from our graph. Um, basically patients under the age of 20 had about 61% improvement whereas patients over 60 had about 38% improvement. Okay, so what would you be your take-home message? Ta take-home message is for clinicians to keep this in mind as a potential uh, procedure to offer patients with vitiligo because they can really respond quite well. 90% of our patients, approximately 90%, um, had some sort of repigmentation and this can be quite profound in terms of cosmetically sensitive areas that generally did not respond to other therapies. Now if I'm a dermatologist and I'm considering this, mm -hmm. uh, what level of difficulty would you say this has? Basically if you know how to take a punch biopsy, you can learn how to do this procedure. Okay. And do you have any disclosures related to this thing? No, not at all. Okay. Dr. Chang, thank you very thank much you for talking much. with us. I appreciate it. Thank you. This has been Damian McNamara with Global Medical News Network.